Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the counselor's office. Ah, Mr. Gaming Counselor. And <laughs> it's happening as based off the, the, the thumbnail. God, it's funny. We're talking about Pow Worlds. It's been quite some time. I'm going to do a review, a react to why devs are afraid of Pow Worlds. By legendary drops, we've done a react to him before. I waited because. I kind of just wanted to see how things are in the world of Power World. So let's jump right into it. Non through Power World falls to one third of its concurrent player base from its all. Oh, what was that? Oh God, I'm already starting to see the headlines right now. The okay. Number posts from gaming journalists are flood non through Power World falls to one third of its concurrent. <laughs> That's, oh my God! Yeah. Peak of over two million players because yep. we were supposed to believe that the game was going to sit anywhere over a million being. One, in early access, and two, releasing in some of the busiest months of game releases that we're going to see for the rest of the year. It's very true. There's a lot of juice coming out. I've been playing in Shrouded Helldivers 2 came out. I'm, I've never played it. Seven Rebirth right around the... I'll fancy, baby! Home, Dragon's Dogma 2. I've never played a Dragon's Dogma. Said, we're gamers. We're going to play everything. Any Absolutely. Get, and, well, as a result, our attention's going to get stolen because... At He's 100% right. For one, I'm, I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy. I've been playing some Tarkov. I've been taking a break from Destiny 2, which has been great for my mental health. It's like brain rot whenever you hate doing something. It is good for your health to do something different. And Power Worlds is no different. It's not that I don't like Power Worlds. It's that it's nice to take a break from that game and play other things so that I can come back and enjoy it again. It's not a game that's necessarily bad or has done anything to make me hate it. And people get this mindset that, ooh, player count is going down the drain. But let's let's look at Power World. Let's look at the Steam charts for Power World. Because I think this is kind of, we, we want to look at the st statistics. We want to look at the stats. So Power World, currently, there's about almost 200K on right now at like 10 o'clock. The 24 hour was 345K. Bear in mind, this is a early access single player with multiplayer, but it's technically a single one and done player game, just like Baldur's Gates. In fact, interesting enough, let's go to a actual game that's triple A that is also a single player game, but that can be played with uh, multiplayer. Let's go Baldur's Gate Steam Charts. Let's see. Let's see. What are we at now? 100K. Game of the year, only 100K, 100K at the 24-hour peak. Does it mean this is a dead game? No, people have consumed it and have moved on. That's what happens with these single-player style games. Not that it's bad. You may come back and revisit it, but it's not live service. Talking about live service, let's look at a live service game. Let's go to Diablo 4, a triple A, you know, been out for uh, at least a year almost. Or it's been out for a year. I don't know. I don't even remember when Diablo 4 came out. It's been out for a while, much longer, and it's not early access. And so this isn't just, this isn't Steam charts. This is a live player count. Live is 164K. There is less people playing a triple A live service game that's on its third season than a indie early access game. That, that, that should tell you everything you need to know. It's not that people don't, it's not like it's a dead game. It's not a bad game. It's just people are moving on. And that's simple enough. They're moving on. All right. What do you got? The game is in early access. It's not going to have a whole lot of content to serve. You exactly. The game had plenty to give us, at least from the get go. Unless you're somebody that's obsessive as me over breeding your pals. I'm just trying to get the perfect one. You know what I mean? Now, with that said, I do find it rather poetic that these gaming journalists are running with that headline. Because of course, anything that fit the, 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 that they said about the game you know, the, the, this game the agenda. Industry sweat, and for good reason, too. And I've been sitting back trying to digest how this game came to be such a massive success. Over 20 because million copies people sold. thought it was a meme and then they realized it had a great, it was fun. The game continues its ongoing development. doesn't really matter. It sold copies. It's a exactly. Success. And I'm sitting here wondering why. And I've done a bunch of videos. I, I can tell you why, because it's fun. I, I know it's it's not, we don't have to make it overly complicated. It's just the simple fact that 
you make a fun game, people will play. Contrasting my opinions with the opinions of many people in the industry, a lot of different things, bad takes, all that stuff. But oh, there are some hot takes. Is I want to talk about why Pal World is so successful, why it blew up the way that it did. And I came to the realization that this industry is just playing it too safe. I agree, but I also think they're, this industry has become oversaturated in greed. Like, I'm thinking back in the Halo days where we had LAN Xbox and you were able to hook up a bunch of consoles, play on your local TV, and just slay out in Halo with your buds. Now, I think it was around the corner of when they forced you to have to be online in order to play with other people. And or you couldn't just have you couldn't have that land party interaction anymore. Now it was you all have to buy your own accounts, you have to buy your own live service, you have to buy your own games, you have to buy have internet. You can no longer just hook up and play. It was no longer it was no longer for the players. It was for the companies. And I think that was the, the tipping was let's make money, not let's make memories. In the sprawling expanse of video game releases, a trend of uniformity and safety has crept into the corners where innovation and boldness once lived. It's become increasingly common to encounter games. He's showing Modern Warfare 3, and I don't even think Modern Warfare 3 is playing it safe. That's like a. They played it cheap. They played it greedily. How can we get. How can we squeeze as much money for less? An $80 game with a two hour do dollar campaign. Okay. Games that feel eerily the same as another. As if the industry itself has settled into this comfortable rhythm, churning out title after title that blends together into this homogenous mix. This isn't just a fleeting observation, it's a visible shift, a transformative landscape that we've seen in the gaming industry. I mean, you can look at literally sports games. Sports games are literally, I mean, even Call of Duty, but more egregiously, sports games are copy and paste. And do you know why they do it? Because people continue to buy it. When people decide this is no longer worth my value, they'll stop. But for some reason, certain pockets of the gaming community just, they take less while paying more. Imagine if the community said, you know what? We want good, fun games. And they're starting to do that. It's start, you're starting to see backlash. But I think it's taking too, too long to do it. Where surprises are now rare and genuine excitement is even rare. The heart of the issue lies in what appears to be this overarching strategy to play it safe in the gaming industry. Many Again, I don't think it's always safe. I think it's always... And you could say, well, playing safe does get you money. No, I think they play cheap. Well, how many, how, what corners could we cut? So that we can put out less, but still get the same amount or more. Like, for instance, Diablo 4 had no real end game, but the, the store had a lot of goodies you could buy. Like, how you could put out a game and still try to get your bang out of it. Like, money-wise. Games today are packed with tasks that resemble chores more than they do challenges that oh, God. are used to relishing. The thrill of exploration, the joy of uncovering a story, and the satisfaction of mastering a skill have been overshadowed by repetitive quests and grinding. These I think Destiny 2, he's, about, he's showing a lot of examples, but I think Destiny 2 is also a prime example of this, simply for the fact that this like Season of the Wish is nothing but reused assets. You're playing old content, you're redoing old things. They're not doing anything new. It's just you're doing the same thing over and over again and selling it as... This is content. Elements meant to prolong engagement instead often dilute the essence of gaming and turn it into a... And most of those things that you do are chores. We play games for fun, and that's why people want fun. They don't want more chores. That's why they have a home. That's why they have a, a mom or a dad if they live at home with them. That's why they have a job where they have to do tasks there. Mere checklist of tasks. Where games were once a form of escape, a portal to worlds unknown and adventures untold, they now risk becoming an extension of our daily routines, filled with to-do lists that offer little to no escapism or even genuine enjoyment.
I, and I think that's a big issue. Big issue. If I wanted to do chores, I would just do. I would go do it here at home or at work. But I don't want to hop online and then. Oh, look, digital chores. Now, this isn't to say that all modern games fall into this trap. No, there's some fantastic games out there that do have some chore-like stuff, but that it makes up in the actual content. However, these titles are becoming more of the exception rather than the rule. Hidden yeah, and that's why a lot of people were like, no, Baldur's Gate is an exception. We shouldn't really think. Well, like, de devs, game devs, right? This is an exception. You really shouldn't look at them. No, you should look at them because this is what people are wanting to buy. The sea of conformity. Then enters Power World. Now, while its gameplay loops are familiar, some of them are you can copy and paste it from other games. Yeah. It takes all of these elements that have been repeated. By I'm, I never say it's not, but like in an addictive blend inspiration still not creature collection. copyright. While games like Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed continue to recycle the same mechanics and formula. God, Assassin's Creed. I bought I bought the old Assassin's Creed on sale, and that's the only Assassin's Creed I'll play because the new ones are just garbage. And games like Suicide Squad kills the Justice League tend to just trend chase looter shooters. Power World took elements from many games and blended them together in a unique experience that while it Yeah, they took everything that was good about him. It feels like something new altogether. Now, I feel like this is something that's also true for a game like Enshrouded as well if you haven't had the opportunity to play it. No, I have not played it. Play it. Hello cat. Mine cats around here somewhere. Review on it eventually. It's just going to take me a little while to get there. But with that said, it's a game that while it does borrow from a lot of other games, it feels like a completely unique experience on its own because well, it is a unique experience on its own. And I feel like the gaming industry at large has just been too afraid to color outside the lines. If I, I would agree. I would say that most games are predictable and it does make them very boring. <laughs> Incredibly boring. Look at action adventure games. They all start to feel like Assassin's Creed games. They have the same kind of tropes of finding areas to be able to clear fog of war and things like that. I feel like most first person shooters feel like a Call of Duty game anymore because. And I, like, even you could say, like, yeah, and that's very true. Everyone's trying to copy Call of Duty or Fortnite. And unironically, like, I told you that it's a mix between playing safe but also greed. If people actually wanted to be as successful as Fortnite, then they should copy verbatim what they do. Like, it's free to play with. They have like literally Band Hero now. They have Lego Minecraft. They have Rocket League Racing. And the microtransactions are not egregious. It's like $10. And they even let you do a free make your own game. It's like you can play all kind, hundreds of different types of games for free in their creative space. Like, of course, I, am, I spent $50 in their store, at least maybe more than that. Because they've earned it. I've got my money's worth out of Fortnite, and it's free. If only games that already require you to pay $70, $60 would actually do something like that, yes, they would make more money. But you have Diablo 4 where it's an $80 game, and then they're trying to sell you a $60 horror skin. Get out of here. Many of them are using the exact same things because they see the successes of these other games and they just want to play it safe because gaming and making games is expensive. And I realize that's that. not an excuse. The time I'm looking inward and well, I realize this is anecdotal. I look at the games that I've been playing over the last few years and many of those games don't fall in line with many of the repetitive processes that the gaming. Yeah, like Elden Ring. Was, it, I've heard good things and I can't wait to play it one day. I haven't been playing games like that been playing cult of the lamb Baldur's gate 3 it went back and played dragon's dogma dark arisen i don't know any of those games except for Baldur's gate many of these games don't follow the current trends of many games in the gaming market right now yeah doing their own thing when i look at a game like suicide squad kills the justice league I'm oh god i've heard so much bad things about it it's gonna fail because they're the worst destiny too trying to do what somebody else did but they're doing a worse job at doing it there's no imagination or creativity. Yeah, people really want to get on this live service hype and it's killing us. You can't just think to yourself, we're going to make a live action or live service looter shooter and it's just going to succeed and we're going to make money and there we go. Easy, easy. No, that's not how it works because there's nothing interesting or innovative there. And that's largely what this industry is missing. I recently saw an article. Yeah, I would say innovation is a strong pain point. Like, if I see a game and it doesn't do anything new 
And it, like, for instance, he's talking about first person shooters. If there's a first, like the finals came out and there might be some changes, but we've seen so many first person shooters. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> Former EA employee was talking about the failure. And I no, I'm not. I, I don't even know if the finals is first person, but I do know it's a battle royale, and we've had plenty of battle royals that's killed my joy of that, except for Fortnite. Here's of Immortals of Avenum, this first person action game. That I've heard about this. That EA was like, we didn't do good, so this means finally, conclusively, that single player suck. Really sell a whole lot. They were quoted saying. At a high level, Immortals was massively overscoped for a studio's debut project. The development costs were around $85 million, and I think EA paid $40 million for marketing and distribution. Okay, they paid $40 million. I never once saw a commercial, even on YouTube or even on anywhere, on social media about this game. So I don't even know where that money went, but whoever they paid, they need to fire. Because it was just, $40 million was set on fire. Sure, there was some serious talent on the development team, but trying to make a triple-A single-player shooter in today's market was truly an awful idea, especially since it was a new IP that was also trying to leverage Unreal Engine 5. What ended up launching was a bloated, repetitive campaign that was far too long. Now yeah, and that's the thing. Like, the reason why things fail is because, one, you, you don't do them right. And I can tell by this gameplay, if this is what the game... It looks incredibly boring. I think this highlights the mindset of AAA studios and publishers that are focused on the... Like, what is this? It looks like Destiny. Like a worse version of it. I believe a AAA first-person shooter adventure game could do just fine in today's market if that game was innovative or interesting, if it did something different. God, it looks so bad. A turn-based CRPG wouldn't succeed in today's market. However, Baldur's Gate 3 is still holding high concurrent play. Exactly. Similar to like 100k is pretty high. Suicide Squad is suffering from a similar mindset. The game isn't failing because of market conditions or trends. It's failing because it's a generic looter shooter with little to no identity of its own. Yeah. I don't see it lasting long. I feel like it's going to close. Ooh. Newly released looter shooter. And what does that tell? That's pretty bad. High quality, originality, or pretty bad experiences sell. Pal World isn't a gaming masterpiece. It's just no, but it has its issues. Fun first, and because of that, and the game playing relatively well and not really having too many issues, the game sells. The game yeah, it'll sell because it's fun. outside of its game trailers that we saw. Like it's dumb. It's not comprehensive. It's not in overly complex. It is simple and to the point. Let's have fun. Over at the Game Awards. Everyone played it thinking that the game was going to be garbage only to find out that they loved it and the fun and the quality marketed the game for them. Yeah, the memes, dude, the memes. Copies at the time in which survival games are a dime a dozen. It doesn't Yeah, there's some good ones out there. Conditions or anything like that. It has everything to do with the final product that's being delivered. I even recently saw a PC Gamer article where they were running with the headline of Immortals of Avenum didn't have a cash shop or a live service model and it still didn't sell. Like, that's something that's going to keep us from buying the game. If they <laughs> oh my god, people are so brain dead. I don't think you should sell a game and advertise does not have microtransactions as its front line. <laughs> If you're telling me the content is not having microtransaction content, the lack of is supposed to make this a better game, the bar has been already set very low. And here's the thing. I think you can have microtransactions in games. Like, I just talked about Fortnite. It's a free-to-play game, and it's filled with microtransactions in the store. And it's not egregious, and I have no problem spending money. And it's obviously a very successful and lucrative pro uh, business model because Epic is doing good. They're able to afford doing all these nice events, working with artists. They're, they're, they're doing things that people only imagine of doing. And their process is very simple. Make fun game. Make not egregious transact microtransactions, and people will play, and they may even pay. Game is good. The game is good, and it's going to sell. 
Well, exactly. I largely people are exhausted of live service models, checklists, and... God, I am. If the game is good, it's going to sell. My bathroom garbage can doesn't have a live service model or a cash shop. I don't think it's going to sell because it's a garbage can. <laughs> and so is most games in in the gaming community. Most of the games that are out there right now are garbage can. The skewed perspectives of people in the gaming industry just drives me crazy. It's the quality of the game and the experience, not what exactly the it is and whether or not it has live service or not. It's the quality first. When I look at Immortals of Avenum, I see a generic first-person action. Man, game. we could just point out to a bunch of games that look generic. Generic and cookie cutter that I could find it on the CW. I don't Ooh! Know. Vampire Diaries. That was an insult right there. CW. Recently watching this video from A16Z, the content creator behind the NoClip documentary. Why can't we learn from success? Oh. I gotta have to watch that video sometime then. Industry where many studios are keeping it safe. Maybe all it takes is giving a cute animal a Again, I don't think it's just safe. I want to emphasize that it's also them being more greedier. ...to turn people's heads. Now, while for him, this is just a passing thought to throw at the end of a video, for me, it's the prime reason as to why many games today are failing to hit the mark. A pervasive fear of offending people. Oh, this God, yes. Led to storytelling that feels sanitary. God, you can't say something that's going to trigger a small group of people. Essence of the human experience for a narrative that's palatable. We don't play games to games that tear away from the very grit and complexity that makes stories resonate with players and instead turns players away. Something else that I find the most troubling. Oh, my God. Noticeable shift in character design, especially that was not what I was expecting women in Western games. In an effort to avoid the minefields of online criticism, many developers have opted to pick designs that feel a little bit more safe, sidelining traits that might otherwise be construed as... Authentic. Okay. Is, is this Fable? This is inherently negative. Diversity... Okay, I do want to make a note. ...in character representation is both necessary and welcome. However, the issue arises when this shift is motivated not by a desire for authenticity, I just want to see. I know there was a lot of drama, but by the way that she looks, yeah, I think do like her older model, but it, I'm not offended by the way that she looks. She, her, I, I really not. Like, I think there's bigger issues, and I hear it's a really good game, but just there are times in the in the gaming sphere where the players do complain a little too much about things that really don't matter, and I think just her cheeks and whatnot. Who cares? City or inclusivity, but a fear of backlash. The consequence is a range of characters that, while they're diverse, often lack depth or are stripped of characteristics that would otherwise make them feel more human, more real. More I think he's right, because when I think of it, I think of, like, token black guy, token Asian person, generic uh, gay couple that we force-fed in there because we want to hit our checkboxes. We want to be... Uh, equal for everyone and where you can literally just like let's think of final fantasy 7 i've been doing that the remake bear is a african-american dude do they make it a big deal that he's black no but he is one of the best characters in the game i love his character it flows it's not a big like aha look what we're doing it fits it's flow it's it's not like some games just really want you like look look at it look at it are you seeing it black guy or gay person like it just doesn't it doesn't matter i you be who you want to be and it can be natural i'm not trying to sound uh inappropriate or disrespectful but i'm i'm just saying you can do things in a way that it just flows it doesn't seem like it's forced like you did it just to hit a checkbox because in reality the people who are you're trying to meet expectations for treating them like a checkbox is kind of degrading on its own moreover the industry's self-censorship doesn't just stop at character design it extends to narratives themselves with yeah the i think there's too many agenda bits being pushed tiptoe around contentious issues or avoid them altogether and let's let me i know i'm talking stopping them a lot but I think, like, for instance, Final Fantasy VII has eco-terrorism, also ta 
capitalism bad, right? There's underlining themes and games, but that, it's natural. It's flowing. Like, I see it, but uh, the story of Final Fantasy VII isn't capitalism is bad. It has the, th the theme in it, but it's not the story. And that's the problem. People want to take these agendas and make it the story versus having it uh, an underlying theme in integrated with the main theme. In doing so, they are forsaking opportunities to engage in topics that would otherwise provoke thought, evoke empathy, or challenge societal norms. Lex Luthor writing about toxic masculinity, Harley Quinn grabbing the butt of another character in Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League, Destiny in Spider-Man 2 taking creative liberty with the Spanish language. No okay. Oh, God, I heard about that. That's right. In Spider-Man 2, they changed, they altered someone else's language to fit their BS. That is un that's unacceptable. God, I hate gaming companies sometimes. ...serve to enhance our experience and often only take us out of the game. The infusion of social and political issues into games is another area where the industry's direction is contentious, to say the least. While yeah, I think gamers are tired of the, the crap. ...platform for social commentary, there's a fine line between meaningful engagement with issues... Exactly. ...and inclusion for mere virtue signaling or as a checkbox for... It, yeah, exactly. ...when every game feels compelled to address social political issues, regardless of whether or not they fit the narrative or enhance the game... Or does it make sense? ...lead to fatigue. Players like myself that are seeking escapism through my games, a break from the complexities and the controversies of the real world, when the game turns into a mirror for those very same issues, I don't want to play it. No. I think that PAL World's success underscores a latent desire among gamers for experiences that just dare to be a little bit different, that don't conform to the cautious norms that have been... And that's why a lot of people were triggered by it. ...definition of mainstream gaming. What does it say when giving a cute animal a gun or making them work in sweatshops is all it takes to grab... Or, let's be honest, you can just ha straight up catch people and make them slaves. Like, it's the biggest... And the, the, it's, it's great. It's fantastic. ...have our attention. It just exemplifies how little needs to be done to shock us. And it shows just how exhausted we are with the state of the industry today. Yeah, w when we are, s something small like that makes us excited. Like, come on. <laughs> you know the gaming world is bad. This is not a call for insensitivity or recklessness in game design. This is largely just a plea for balance within the industry. I think that you can make bold and respectful characters and still craft a great game and a great... Like, like I said, Barrett. African American, fantastic character, but it's not in your face that he's black. Story. I've said this I don't know how many times making this comparison, but we look at a game like Baldur's Gate 3, they had no problem being inclusive and still having teeth at the exact yeah. same time. It was still you could not only could you be straight, gay, whatever, you could also make love to a bear. Their uh, furries get to have some love in there too. Like and was it more natural? Absolutely really enjoyable experience for just about anybody that wanted to play the game. See what I did there? I said natural and it's a bear. <laughs> Sorry. Game. And I don't think that that's a really high bar to set, though that's probably uh, maybe too high of a bar for many. So many oh, the yeah. Like EA is too high for them. These people that don't even play their games in the first place. Why are you trying to appease them if they're not even your customers? <laughs> you want to know what you have watched developers play their own game? And you will understand why games are the way they are. I've watched people in Destiny play their game. I've watched people in Diablo play their game. You want to know why a game is the way it is. They don't play their own game. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I think largely this has more to do with social media than it does anything else. Especially if we look back at a game like Hogwarts Legacy. We saw that developers from Hogwarts Legacy oh, were yeah. harassed by people online just because they had something to do with the project in the first place. Not because it was their own opinions. People that it ended up helping them. Points online more than anything. And then that ends up seeping into our game design, into our narratives, into the backstories of characters, into their character designs themselves. And it's ridiculous. Just because they probably don't want to become targets of people on the internet. Absolutely. The world has made the industry sweat because it didn't use a 50 to 200 million 
dollar marketing budget just to get no. it the ground. It's offensive, even using themes of forced labor. It also, it didn't use 40 million in advertisement. Like, I'm going to tell you, I may have saw this at like one of the game shows, but I never once saw advertisement for this until it hit all over Twitter. And then I was like, this kind of looks kind of good. I kind of want to give it a try. And so, and it was on sale. I was like, oh yeah, I'll give it a try. And the best 30 bucks I spent in my life. Didn't have microtransactions, battle passes, or anything. Of no, imagine that. Just survive, it excelled. Regardless of how many players are playing Pal World a month from now, I would buy expansions if they kept it going. Like Ark, instead of writing a policy, they did that Ark's way up. They posted videos on how to cook a lamb ball. <laughs> unapologetic when many Western studios are good. Don't give a crap about the Western studios. They're a bunch of dumb morons. Not all of them, just there's a bunch of them. I don't want to feel bad for liking attractive characters in my games, and I largely exactly. It's okay to have hot, sexy daddies <laughs> or mamacitas. You know, you could have a little bit of everything, and that's okay. Why? Because we play games. We play games to escape the world, not continue to live in it. And if you're one of those people that you feel like I can't get an A-looking person, at least I can get it in the game. I don't want to continue to look at B or C-looking people because you may feel like you're one of those people. You want to you want to look at the hottest of the hot. You want to live in your fantasy. And don't act like you don't live in your fantasies because everyone lives in fantasies where they would like a an attractive person or at least someone who with an attractive heart. But mostly people want hot people, attractive people. When I sit down to play a game, I want to do just that. Play a game, explore a world, engage in a captivating narrative. Get to know unique I want a hot looking game stories, and it's fun challenges and enjoy myself however over the past few years the games that we have had have put all of their time and effort into everything other than gameplay and as a result I haven't been buying many of them and I don't think many others will either Pal world is a wake-up call a lesson a shining big red light that's telling these developers to stop and just wait, yeah. and wait for a minute. I want more Armored Core 6s, more Baldur's Gate 3s, Elden Rings. Elden Rings more there you go. Worlds. I want more games that put my experience first rather than the egos of developers and publishers and studios or whatever's trending on Twitter. I realize that the gaming industry isn't probably going to feel the effects of these kind of games that have come out over the last year or last couple of no. years that have been really great that have actually resonated with players because the industry itself is too big too much money it's too many people for it to just turn on a dime immediately but i'm praying i'm hoping that they're seeing reason that they're seeing that players are resonating with different kind of experiences that are contrary to whatever their beliefs are especially responding to people that aren't even playing your games to begin with Please. <laughs> or responding to the people that do play your games how many de game developers respond to the people that play their game and give them criticism? Like, hey, this is the problem. And they start to attack them, calling them an incel or calling them uh, woman haters or, you know, completely demonizing these people, diminishing their, their, their criticism, not because they have an issue with a theme. Maybe it is a theme, but mostly if they have a, an actual factual logical well thought out criticism because they want to see the game improve or they like the company you shouldn't put someone down for that like that just makes people not care about your your game or company like oh you're that kind of person that's not going to listen to your community you're just going to dog us great cool please just pay attention to the people that are actually playing games those are the ones that you want because they're the most likely to actually buy something from you in the first place. Imagine, listen to people who actually want your stuff. The best opportunity for me to signal boost the things that we love about games and talk about the things that we don't. Because largely, I think that's the best way for us to get better games in the future. That's why these are like my most favorite videos to make. Oh, I love I Power World videos large list of games and game videos I'm going to be making over the next few weeks and days. I have a lot of work to do. Final Fantasy 7, Dragon's Dogma 2. I got a Ooh. shrouded review. Right, I'm going to end the, I'm going to end it there simply because he's starting to go on and I'm going on probably too.
Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything he said. I think I said enough in my opinions. I truly do believe that uh, if you make a fun game, people will buy it. And he's right. It, 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 these developers will not turn on a dime, especially if players are giving them their dimes, right? If you're giving them money, like Call of Duty is going to continue pumping out Call of Duty games. And as long as people continue to buy them, and continue shilling out for microtransactions and whatnot, they're going to still do what they do. Nothing's going to change. Because actions mean more than words. You can be angry, you can complain about something, you can criticize something, but if you don't put your money where your mouth is, they don't care. But I hope that he's right. I hope we do get to a state where we kind of go backwards, where we can get back some of the ground we've lost to playing it safe, but also greed. Greed has also infected the gaming sphere where it's not about the gamer, it's about how much juice you can squeeze out of them. And I think that's bad. And some companies are starting to feel it when people no longer are showing interest in their games. I'm Mr. Gaming Counselor. Hit the like button, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Hit the link to the video. Check out the channel down below. I thank you guys, as always. Don't forget to game out.